Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maggie and welcome to Vlogmas. I'm so happy you're here. We're going to start off this whole month long series essentially with a chatty get ready with me. I also posted for any questions or topics you guys wanted me to chat through and I did get um, some really nice ones. So thank you to those that posted a question. I put it on my community page on YouTube. So I'm going to kind of get ready. It's a normal day for me. I'm working from home. Um, so we'll kind of go through that, but I'm so excited to chat with you. So um, let me go ahead and start. I'm going to get my primers out and we'll start with some of the first questions. So God, I can't see that. I, that's embarrassing. Okay. Um, let's see here. What is your dream wedding inspiration or anything you want to share? So um, I am getting married next summer. So excited. And I feel really lucky because my fiance and I are on the same page and kind of had the same goals, I suppose, and, and dreams for a wedding. So it's going to be really small, as in like 15 people small. <laughs> so that has made everything so much easier because I don't have to, I don't know, wrangle so many people, like every aspect, the, the decor, the space, the food, all of it is just so much easier because, what is that? Because there's not a lot of people. So our kind of whole thing is like quality over quantity. So even though it's going to be small, we're going to have really nice food. Um, one of our favorite restaurants will be providing food. Um, the space that we're in is really kind of unique. It's kind of like a old school, like study library, kind of like dark academia type vibe. It's gorgeous. I can't wait to share a little bit more afterwards. Um, but because of all of those kind of things coming together, it makes it a really kind of easy process for us. So our, um, venue isn't like technically a wedding venue it's just like a private space um, but uh, I don't need it to be you know super big and fancy we're not doing like a DJ or a dance or anything that's just not really us um, so our priorities were to have good food um, really nice kind of relaxing atmosphere and um, a quality you know just kind of time with our friends so we're not doing like a reception till midnight with dancing and all that. It's just going to be um, the ceremony. We're going to do a cocktail hour right after. Um, then we'll do dinner and then have like a after party for an hour or two. And then that's it. So it's not anything that's too crazy, but the location and everything is really unique. Um, so I will share more about that afterwards and like video clips and stuff like that. But I'm really grateful that we're on the same page. I mean, the guest list was pretty much like a really easy thing. We're not doing extended family. Um, we're doing like parents, very close friends of the family and very close friends to us. And that's it. Um, and then, you know, plus ones and all that. But it makes it pretty easy when... When you don't open it up to every everybody um and thankfully we haven't had too much drama with that everybody we tell you know our plans to have really positive things to say especially people that are married they say oh my gosh i would i wish i would have done it like that a lot of stress with big weddings so i'm really excited um the other thing is we're i don't know i wouldn't call us old but we're not getting married right after college like so many of my friends did. So um, I've been able to attend quite a few weddings and really kind of develop, I guess, my taste and what I like, what I don't like. And one of the things I don't like about some weddings is the pageantry and kind of like, I don't know, showing showing off to show off or whatever. Sometimes there's weird dynamics at play. So grateful for that. Um, I'll be 29 when I get married. My fiance is older than me. So we're, we're just doing what we want and we're really excited for it. Um, the other thing I would say about the wedding is it's been so low maintenance. It's almost eerie. Like I'm kind of waiting <laughs> for like there to be a surprise, but I'm kind of confident at this point. I mean, everything's booked. 
Um, I'm sending the invites out probably in the next week. Um, it should be pretty straightforward and everything's at the same location. So that helps too, where you don't have to like worry about transport and like, are people drinking and driving and all that, like the hotel, everything is like on the same campus. So that should help really a lot too. Okay, another question is, would you both want to have children? Um, that is something we don't want. I can say I've never, I don't know, I've never felt the desire to be a parent. Um, just not in me. I know people say, oh, you'll change your mind, but I'm 28, almost 29. I turned 29 at the end of the month. Still don't feel that desire. Um, my partner doesn't feel that desire either. So that's nice. I mean, when I was in my early twenties, that's something I would bring up as I was going on dates and meeting people and, and all of that. I mean, not on like the first date, but you know, if I, if I was starting to really enjoy my time with somebody, I didn't want to waste my time or their time. So I would ask, you know, like, what are your thoughts on marriage? What are your thoughts on kids? What are your thoughts on where you want to live in the future? Like those high level things and the people that would say like, oh, I for sure want to have kids, you know, I would say, you know, that's just not something I really want to do or have ever had the desire to. And it's helpful to have that conversation early because you don't want to like waste someone's time. If that's what they really want to do and they want to do it in the next three years, like let me get out of your way. So I'm grateful that we, my fiance and I feel the same way about that. Um... Thoughts on returning more to permanently to the city place or lease it out or keep it um, at a rotation with your lake spot. So for those of you that know, we have two homes. Um, my fiance and I both own a town home. Um, so that's kind of something that's different, I suppose, than maybe a traditional relationship we bought before we knew each other. So I own a town home in the Minneapolis area. And at this point, we have no plans to lease it. We do actually go down there, I would say pretty frequently. I mean, probably every six weeks or so we're down there for some reason or another. Um, it was really nice because in May, my fiance had a lot of work. And so instead of going back and forth, because we're about three and a half hours of the lake place where we live pretty much full time, it's about three and a half hours. So to do that every week, you know, it's kind of annoying. So in May, we pretty much were just in the city for a month, which is great. Um, my family also uses the space a lot. Um, so like my dad and uncles and stuff like that um, will, will use it quite a bit because nobody else in my family lives in Minneapolis anymore. So that has also been nice too. It's kind of like a pit stop for anybody coming through or that wants to see friends or be in town for the weekend they have somewhere to stay. So that's why we're not leasing it because if you lease it, you lose that flexibility. Um, long term, I am, I think we're going to hold on to it. We do get a lot of value. We're lucky that we can afford it. And when I bought, it was in 2018. So my interest rates are really low and the monthly payment is pretty, pretty easy. Um, if I would have bought like last year when interest rates and all that were a lot higher, it might be different. So for right now, we're keeping it. Um, I don't like obviously share every thing I do every day, but we are down there um, quite a bit. And it's just, yeah, it's nice to have somewhere to stop in. You know, I can do laundry. We can, we have a full kitchen. Like it, when we're there for even just like three, four days, it's just nice to have more space than a hotel room a lot of times. Sometimes we stay in hotel rooms, but a lot of times we're at, at that house. Okay. A few questions. Um, how did you come up with your budgeting style? I'm trying so hard to ditch my cash envelopes and go cashless. Ugh, I, I feel that. So I really love being cashless. I mean, I keep a little bit of cash in my wallet. Um, and sometimes it's just easier, but I, you know, kind of found Dave Ramsey thought, mm, this is interesting, but seemed a little, little extreme. I mean, he definitely helped me light a fire to get out of debt. And then you realize like how much debt payments were holding me back. But as far as like different categories and sinking funds, I do plan to do a video this month about setting up everything for next year for 2024. But 
I kind of like to condense things. So like sometimes I see other people's budgets and this is whatever works for you. Like who am I to judge? Um, where there's like Christmas, birthdays, Mother's Day, Father's Day, like all these different things that you're going to buy gifts for. And I just have one gifts sinking fund and all the gifts I'm going to buy throughout the year come from that. So I think that's one way to kind of streamline. Um, I do then kind of have a list of who I plan to buy for, how much and all of that. And I can kind of check it off, but that's one way that I streamlined. I also, I used to have like entertainment, eating out, clothes, like all of these different shopping categories. And I lumped all those together into my spending category. So each month I give myself $500 for spending and it's for any of those things, eating out, clothes, buying jewelry, um, going to a movie, going to a concert, just anything that's like personal wants, that kind of thing, all goes through there. Um, and that's helped me tremendously when it comes to tracking my spending. It's just less things to track, less categories to worry about. And um, I think that's the one thing that I've really enjoyed. As far as the cashless part, I use a cashback credit card. Um, so my Capital One, I get 1.5% cashback on everything. And I also have a Discover card, which gives me 1% cashback on everything. But then each quarter, there's a certain category like groceries, gas, um, restaurants, things like that. That's 5% cash back. So those incentives have also kept me kind of on the credit card thing. And I just pay off my balance weekly. So like every, usually on Mondays, um, uh, Mondays or Tuesdays, I'll go through everything and just pay my cards from the different funds and all that good stuff and update it. So as long as you're staying on top of it, obviously you don't want to get into debt. And if credit cards are tricky for you, then might not be the best fit. But for me, the cash back is the incentive because first of all, the cost of living, the cost of living has gone up. And so I kind of see credit cards that have a cash back incentive as a way to help kind of like, you're not beating, but like keep up with inflation. Um, I also really love how easy it is to track my purchases. So I can go through on my app and just see everything. When I do cash, I don't always get receipts. Sometimes I lose the receipts, like it's all physical. And I just think that digital is so much easier. So that's what I do. Um, for the different sinking funds, I do have different accounts for them. So I use the capital one 360 accounts. You can open as many accounts as you want. There's no minimum balances and there's a decent, um, interest rate for savings accounts. So that's something I do. And then I just transfer from there. I guess I can show that like in my blogs this month. Um, for those that are like more interested in like the logistics, <laughs> but yeah. Um, let's see. There's a couple of other questions. Um, what did you do for Thanksgiving? Did you spend the extra money you saved? Yes, I did. Um, my dad came to visit and, um, that was really nice. We don't live close together. We're about probably like seven hours apart. So that was really nice. Um, and that's again with like the townhouse store in the city. A lot of times when we do get together, we'll meet halfway, but this time he came all the way up here. So that was kind of special, um, for him to come up to the lake. Um, as far as what we did, we just kind of laid low. Um, I bought sides, side dishes from a local, uh, restaurant and they were so good. And so that was nice. So we got stuffing and we got mashed potatoes and then like a cranberry jalapeno, sauce thing. And then uh, my fiance grilled steaks for us. We're not like big turkey people. I don't know. So that's what we did. And we ate and we just watched TV. We walked around town on Saturday, just kind of hung out. Like it wasn't, or not on Saturday, on Friday, just kind of an easy thing. I did spend the extra money. So I used some of it for um, some like miscellaneous Black Friday, Cyber Monday purchases. Um, and then also for $800 set aside in my vacation fund and that went towards the sides that I bought for, for food and all that. So I did use the extra money. It was really nice. Um, and then do you have any siblings or other family members that live near you? Um, I don't have any siblings. I don't really have any family that lives near me. Um, Thankfully, we have a really great community of friends up here and like, you know, we, we are always being included in a lot of things, but we don't have family that live right here. We're definitely at least 
god at least three and a half hours if not more away so that's kind of how we are with our with our dynamic and everything yeah. okay i'm gonna do a couple more questions okay last question is would you consider making more vlogs next year yes absolutely if you like vlogs i can definitely do that i just never know if people like actually like vlogs or not but i was thinking maybe for the new year i could do like at least a monthly vlog where you know it's like a week in the life or like a certain weekend if I have something exciting going on but I was thinking about that yeah maybe posting a monthly vlog just to hang out um and then also how do you manage it all work fiance friends family house um I definitely don't <laughs> that's something I'm working on um here's the thing is everything is a choice every day and I don't choose everything every day um so I'm a person that can get overstimulated pretty quickly. And when I get overstimulated, I get really irritable and I just like need to be in a room alone to decompress. So that's something I know about myself. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why working from home works really well for me. When I worked in an office building with like people, it's not that I can't be around people, but like after so long, you just get tired of it. Um, so that's something where, because I work from home, I mean, obviously I interact with meetings and like Slack and whatever, but on the weekends when I do actually want to be social, I want to go out, I want to see people, I want to do all that. Um, so that helps me balance. I try not to make too many plans on weeknights. Like sometimes I'll, I'll do something here and there, but not regularly because that home, like quiet time is so needed for me. Um, as far as like the house, that's always a work in progress. I always feel behind. I kind of have a basic routine I do every week. Like I clean the bathrooms every week. I clean like our laundry and the towels. And there's some things that I do every week. And then there's some things that I do once a month. And I'm sure everybody has different like standards, but that's what works for us. So I have, um, I can show you my planner, my vlogs. You'll see me like cleaning and all that. But, um, I have the product. I have some things that I do like, um, week one, week two, week three, week four, and I just rotate. And that helps quite a bit. Um, and as far as family, uh, kind of like I was saying, we don't have a ton of family near us. So when we do have family in town or when we do travel to see family, that's kind of the focus and the priority. But I certainly don't do all of it every day. <laughs> <laughs> that would be crazy. And I often feel, yeah, like behind and not, I don't know, not where I should be. But I'm trying really hard to separate that because what's the point of being like so down on yourself? To me, as long as the house is like relatively picked up, it's not like gross dirty. It's not like there's trash everywhere. It's not like there's food everywhere. If it's just kind of like messy and has piles of stuff fine. You know, like it's no big deal, but that's something that I've had to kind of let go of. And as far as work goes, um, I'm kind of at this weird point where like, I am on a little bit of like a cruise control through the end of the year. I'm taking vacation at the end of the year. A lot of my stuff kind of naturally pauses because I work with clients and they also take time off at the end of the year. So right now there is a little bit of push at the beginning of the month to kind of get things done before the end of the year. But at the same time, everybody is on their own time. Everybody has their own things going on. So I'm kind of trying to let work just run its course and not being like so worked up and anxious about things because everything will work out in the end. It always does. Sometimes it's a bumpier road, but it always is fine in the end. So that's my two cents there. But along the way, my vlogs, you'll see You'll see some of this in action, I think. Um, but yes, that is it for today's Get Ready With Me Q&A. Thank you so much for posting um, questions. Those are really fun. And yeah, this is my like daily look. So I just use a powder foundation, a little bit of color, you know, on my face, a basic eye look, and this is it. So I'm really enjoying my makeup basket. Um, probably switch a couple of things out here soon, but I love that I can just bring it with me. 
um, wherever I am getting ready in the house. So yeah, this was fun. Thank you again for watching and I hope you enjoy Vlogmas this month. I will be posting every day and I can't wait to see you in tomorrow's video. So take care and see you soon.